so what? Uh, how has your ink experience been? This is the first time you're at Ink. It's been phenomenal. I mean, I didn't know what to expect, but uh, I think meeting the kinds of people, hearing the kinds of stories, has been truly inspirational. It's given me a lot of ideas and uh, lots to take back home. Uh, so uh, I think the audience took a lot back home from your session. So uh, what is what are the things that you think that uh, the audience should take back home and act on? So I, I talk mainly about the power of the network. Since I've created three different networks, one in technology, one in sustainability, one around the Indian American community, really I think what everybody here uh, has to realize they're part of this powerful network. So the network can be impactful. Uh, you have to give it time. It's not something you just come once and be part of a network. You need to stay in tune. You need to be participating. You need to really help the network. And then that's what strengthens any kind of network like this. And the more you do with the network, the more powerful it becomes. So really thinking of, of each individual's role in a network. Not just think, okay, I came to a conference, but rather how do I remain connected with all the people I met? How do I contribute to the network? Uh, is all something every attendee needs to think about as well. Uh, so, uh, what kind of application does networking have? Because we think uh, that networking will help in certain fields. So, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I think most people think of it as uh, maybe helping get a job. Yeah. Okay. Or if you're a company, helping get funding or getting a new customer. I go to a network like this with nothing, uh, no expectations. So, I go in just saying, can I add value to the network? Whether it's connecting two people I know or helping someone, and I just go in with that open attitude as opposed to expecting anything from the network. Uh, so, uh, do you think networking can help uh, an individual rather than corporates? As in, as in, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, because here I've already met 10 people I didn't know, and a couple of them connected in ways that I didn't expect them to connect. It's just you have to keep an open mind, you have to look for commonality of interest, and, and you make a connection. So it doesn't have to be anything about your business. Uh, so uh, right now, all most of the networking happens digitally. Yeah. So uh, how do you compare uh, digital networking vis-a-vis face-to-face uh, networking at such places? Digital network is better for large communities with uh, where you distance. There's a distance between people. I think there's no substitute for physical network because there's nothing like you and me sitting here uh, and I can see the emotional response you or I have to things. We can connect in ways that we cannot connect digitally at all. Uh, so I think this is probably the most powerful form of networking that I've seen. Okay. Uh, so you said you've built three networks. Uh, so currently you're working on the Indian American uh, community in the US. So what uh, what is your end game as in what do you hope to achieve because it is a substantial community there. Yeah, so we have come of age in the United States where 3 million strong, 1% of the population, the highest earning demographic in India in the US, $100,000 a year. The average American makes only $50,000 a year. So we're very, very strong. And at the same time, when you compare ourselves to the Jewish Americans, only 2% of the community there, uh, their influence is very high and we have very low influence. So the whole uh, notion of starting in diaspora was to raise the visibility of our community, engage more on a political and social basis, so that we actually have influence across the United States. Uh, so can we, uh, whatever learnings you've uh, had from you know these networks, so how can it be applied in India as in most middle class Indians don't wield the power at all being Indians? So, so I, I think it's, you know, networks have to have causes, I think in some sense. So you have to have certain causes, whether it's uh, like someone earlier mentioned, there's a middle class in India that needs to actually be empowered and do things. So maybe there's a opportunity to create a middle class network in every city where people of certain incomes get together and discuss issues that are common to them and try to help each other. So there, there could be very interesting networks formed in India that people haven't thought about yet. Uh, you know, usually think of networks in India in the old way of a union. Uh, I don't think in this new world you need unions. You just need these virtual networks. And I think middle class is one such thing that can be created in India. <laughs> Uh, so we uh, we work in the digital sphere as, as blog and So how do you think? Uh, what kind of advice would you like to give to digital denizens who kind of connect and network and uh, play out their power plays on in the digital world? See, I think the 
the, the approach or philosophy to networking doesn't change with the medium, whether it's physical or virtual. Like I said, the way I do networking and think of networking is adding value and connecting two people without expecting any quid pro quo. Okay? That's what it is. And then the network will return its goodwill to you in some form or shape in the future. Don't expect anything. Thank you so much.